In this video we're going to talk about multi-stage growth models. The simplest model is a two-stage growth model. For a two-stage growth model you forecast a dividend next period and then there is some forecast period where you forecast a constant growth rate. At the end of that period, say n periods from now, you forecast another growth rate that will continue on forever. If you value that continuing growth in dividends as a growth perpetuity, discount it and the subsequent in the intervening dividends at a required rate of return, add them up, you'll have the value of the stock today. If you think about it, that creates a growth annuity between now and the forecast period at one growth rate, and then a growth perpetuity after that at another growth rate. And if we have two stage or three stage or four stage or ten stage growth models, they're very, very similar. They all have the property that there are some growth rates and dividends between now and some terminal date, after which things need to settle down into a constant growth rate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a very simple way to handle all of these different types of models in a consistent and relatively easy way. And the key to that is to break your forecasts up into essentially two parts. The first is a di forecast for next period's dividend and dividends between now and the end of your forecast horizon. In the two-stage growth model, those are forecasts with a constant growth rate. But if it's three stages or four stages, those growth rates change. Then there's a second part. The second part, you switch to a new terminal growth rate that will last forever. And as long as that is less than the required return, you can value the dividends from the end of the forecast period on forever as a growth perpetuity by dividing by return minus growth. The growth perpetuity formula discounts that one time automatically. So using the growth perpetuity formula gets you the value at the end of the forecast period. So this is called either the terminal value because it's at the end of the forecast period or the continuing value because it represents the value of the company continuing past the forecast period and all those future dividends. Well then what you do is you just divide that by interest to bring it back to today and each dividend by interest to bring them back to today and add them up. And you'll have the value of the stock today. And it doesn't matter how many different growth rates or whether every single dividend is forecast one at a time between now and that terminal period. So the easiest way to do this is with an example. I made up when our daughters were pretty young because they were buying dolls at an incredible rate. So we'll call this the L Girl Doll Company for Leah and Linnea. And suppose that you've averaged 5% growth per quarter for the last five years and think you can do it for two more years. If you pay dividends quarterly, that's eight periods. Then you project growth to drop to a more reasonable rate of 1.5% per quarter. Now it doesn't matter how high the growth rate is between now and the terminal period, as long as the growth rate at the terminal period is less than the required return. So I'm assuming here that the required return is 2.5%, the growth rate is 1.5%, so this will all work. First thing we'll do is take last period's dividend, which we should know at this point, multiply by the anticipated growth to get next period's dividend. We'll put the whole thing on a timeline. Put that first por forecast on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a trick that you can use in your calculator to do this actually quite easily. It's going to be using both the cash flows and the memory registers. I'm going to set cash flow zero at zero because then when I get net present value, I'll just have the present value of the future cash flows. Cash flow one I already know is 21 cents, and here's the trick. The trick is I'm going to store that in memory register one and enter it as the cash flow. And the reason is when I go to period two, 
I have to take that cash flow from period 1, the 21 cents, and multiply it by 1.05. If I have it stored in memory register 1, that's very easy. I'll store this in memory register 2 and enter it as the second cash flow. Again, I have to multiply the period 2 cash flow, recall 2, times 1.05 to get the period 3 cash flow, store it, and enter it. Then you recall 3, 1.05 equals store it in memory register 4 and enter it. Recall 4, 1.05, store, enter, recall 5, 1.05, store, 6, enter, recall 6, 1.05, store 7, enter, recall 7, 1.05 equals, I'm going to store that in 8, but I'm not going to enter it as the cash flow yet. Let me show, let me write all this down on my timeline. Let's see if I recall correctly. That was 22.05 in period 2. 23.15 in period 3, 24.31 in period 4, 25.53 in period 5, 26.80 in period 6, 28.14 in period 7, 29.55 in period 8, in period 9, what I need to do is switch to the new growth rate. The new growth rate is 1.5 percent, so it'll be 29.99. Right, so that is, over this entire horizon, 5 percent growth per period, and after that, 1.5 percent per period. Now I'm going to value the continuing value here as a growth perpetuity, so I'm going to divide this by the discount rate minus the growth rate. That's the value as of period 8 if I put the period 9 cash flow in there because the growth perpetuity formula automatically discounts one time. So I need to discount this eight more times. But I also have to discount the period 8 cash flow eight times. So I'll add those together first before I put it in the period 8 cash flow. So the price as of period 8 is the 29 cent dividend in period 9 divided by in parentheses return minus growth 29.99 plus the dividend in period 8 gives me a total cash flow in period 8 of 30.28 the idea here is this is just like holding the cash the stock through the forecast period and selling at the terminal value. But price is independent of holding period by no arbitrage, so this will work to value the stock just as well as anything else. Again, I can go through the cash flows here and make sure I got everything in correctly. 21, 2205, 2315, 2431, 2552, 2680, 2814, and the final value, which is 29.99 plus the 29.35 dividend. Well, what do I have to do to get the value of the stock? Discount it.
there we go. Add that all up. Well, that's what your calculator is designed to do. Hit the net present value button. 2.5% interest. Down arrow, compute. 2640 is the value of the stock today. Now this generalizes to any number of growth periods that you want in any forecast of dividends as long as there exists some finite point in time where beyond that point in time you believe that the dividends will settle into a constant growth rate. And what you do is you forecast each dividend between now and the end of the forecast period. Value the terminal value, the tail or the continuing value as a growth perpetuity, discount it and each of the individual dividends back to today, add them up, and you have the value of the stock.